Watch where you're going, friend. Borracho. Amigo, I do business in South America. Don't be calling me a drunk, huh? Desayuno. Ay, padre. Cuídate, niña. Adiós, abuelita. Aquí te mejores. Gracias, mi vida. Ay, mi si quieren los huevos fríos, bueno, está bien. Pero si los quiere caliente, ven cuando te llamo. ¿Qué le pasa a este hombre? ¿Qué te pasa? Escúchame, mi amor. Anoche, cuando regresaba del trabajo, tuve una pelea. 
No sé ni cómo explicártelo. Fue una cosa loca, una cosa estúpida. Tropecé con este gringo en la acera y... y me dijo algo, ni recuerdo qué. Entonces me empujó y... yo lo empujé a él y se cayó. Olía a vino cuando llegaste esa noche. Sí, mi amor, es verdad que había tomado mis ostraitos con los muchachos después del trabajo, pero... pero este tipo había bebido bastante más. Dos hombrones, importándose como niños. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Nada, mamá, hablamos después. This is upsetting her. Speak English. When he fell, his head hit the fire hydrant. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Cuéntenme. I bent over him to, to see if I could help him. And then a woman came out of a building and started to scream. So I ran. In the paper, he says I, I hit him with something. He must believe that. He believes what he wants to believe. Gotta go to the hospital. Talk to him. Make him understand. Make him realize that it was an accident, that I didn't hit him. No. You can't. He lives in a different world. You cannot trust him to believe you. To want to believe you. My name's Buchanan. David Buchanan. There's no reason for you to remember it. Sure. I took your statement at the hospital. Mugging downtown ten days ago. Sit down, Mr. Buchanan. Twelve days ago. Twelve days and about nine hours, to be exact. We've sent your description of the mugger to all districts. Instructed all beat cops, prowl cars, to be on the alert. Their reports have been negative. Sergeant, do you understand how I feel? Some guy slugs me with brass knuckles or with the butt of a gun. I had a blood clot that might have been fatal. For three days, three days, I had time to consider the possibility I might be a dead man. Now, the description I gave you is a good one. He's about my height, 6'4". Speak Spanish, dark hair, good looking, with a scar on his neck. Now, what more do you need? His address would help. We know the section of the city where he probably lives, but we can't make a house to house search. And he doesn't seem to have a record. Might be his first defense. You couldn't pick him out of our mug books. All right, then what about the watch? We've checked the pawnbroker's list. Trouble is, they figure it's hot, they might not report it. So it all comes back to that neat one-word brush-off, negative. Look, this is no brush-off, Mr. Buchanan. Your case is active. We're working on it. Take it on faith, huh? The work goes on around the clock. You don't believe it? If you can't find this man, I can see only one reason for it. Maybe it's just that you don't care enough. Carol, he's here. Dave, our rep in Chicago just called. I thought you sent him those figures on the Austrian China. I'm sorry, Ted. I forgot. Didn't you listen to the man in the white coat? You think he was talking about two other people? He told you to rest. You're not a machine. You took a beating, Dave. You need a vacation, a long one. No place I want to go. That's why I don't take vacations. Miami, lemons and oranges. Palm Springs, oranges and lemons. Vegas is the same thing. They're on slot machines. Don't worry, Ted. 
I'll take a week off. I know a place I want to go. Fine. Where? East. East L.A. East Los Angeles. Why? I'm going to find the guy who did this. Wait, well, you're kidding. You've got to be kidding. Call Kay. Tell her I'll be out of town for a week. Crisis with our reps in Detroit, Chicago. Tell her anything, but keep it vague. You're not making sense, Dave. How can you find him if the police can't? Because I saw him, and they didn't. That's the difference. I'll find him. And then? That's all. So hard, he'll spend as much time in the hospital as I did. Only I won't hit him from the rear. I'll hit him so he'll know who's hitting him and why. Can you hear yourself, Dave? Do you realize what you're saying? Ted, if I had time, I could convince you that what I'm doing is perfectly normal. Any man with guts would say, if I ever run into the guy who slugged me, I'll pay him off good, right? Well, I'm just taking the next logical step. I'm not leaving that meeting to chance. If you do this thing, you're a nut, understand? A 100% mint condition nut. That's not a very clinical word. I won't flatter you with textbook jargon. You're a nut if you go through with this. Maybe. Maybe I am. But I know one thing. If I don't do it, I won't be good for anything else. What the devil do I care about the price of Austrian China or freight rates in Japan when the guy who busted my head open, put me in the hospital, nearly killed me, is enjoying himself? Maybe only two miles from where I'm standing right this minute. Dave, it's a job for the police. I'm going to say it again. You're a nut if you go through with this. Ted? You've been married and divorced three times. Always to the same type. Young, beautiful girls with empty heads and hearts like cash registers. Do you enjoy being picked over financially by these pretty vultures? I'll try to forget you said that. Look, don't take it so big. It's a flaw in your character, that's all. Don't worry, I've got mine. Everybody has. I hit back, Ted. That's my particular flaw. Anybody shoves me, I shove back. Only harder. I'm not proud of it, but I live with it. You thought about Kay, your boy Tommy? Or are you just dismissing your responsibilities to them by pointing amiably to a flaw in your character? I've known you 15 years, but I don't know you at all. Call Kay. I don't want her to worry about me. for a guy I used to work with, a friend of mine. Speaks Spanish. Has a big scar right here. This man with a scar, you don't know his name? We used to attend bar in a joint over on the strip. You know how it is. Call him amigo, hey mate.
anda buscando un hombre. Me lo acaba de decir Luis. Te anda buscando. Hace dos noches que lo vi en una cantina. Cálmate, de... mi amor, cálmate. ¿Qué te ha pasado? Te estaba describiendo la cicatriz en el cuello, tu altura, tu cara, todo. Siéntate, mi vida, siéntate. This man, what does he look like? Luis says like someone out of work. Cheap clothes, but very smooth hands. ¿Por qué no hablan español? Very tall like you. Reddish blonde hair and a scar on his forehead that hasn't been there too long. What does he want? I guess he wants blood. He's the man I told you about. I should have gone to him from the beginning. Tried to make him understand. It wouldn't have helped. There's something I didn't tell you. When he fell, the strap on his watch broke. I reached down to pick it up, to put it in his pocket. But when that woman screamed, I ran. I was six blocks away before I realized I still had it in my hand. I can understand you were frightened. Is it possible he only wants his watch back? What's a watch to him? Seventy-five, a hundred dollars? He can buy dozens of them. Where, where, where is it? Miguel's out of work. He needed money. I had none to give him, so I pawned it just to help him out until I get paid. It would have been better to throw it away. Couldn't do that. It's worth something. You've got to get it back. Maybe he doesn't want the watch. Maybe he wants me. Maybe you should go to the police. It's too late now. ¿Por qué no hablan español? Where's Encarna? She's downstairs with Trini. She's doing... He finds me, he finds you. Encarna, your mother, he might be crazy enough to hurt you. I've got to get away from here. I've got to pack up and leave. Carlos, no! Oh, listen to me. You know what he looks like. You describe him to Encarna. No! You tell her if she sees him to run away. To get away from him. Well, where will you be? What can you do? Carlos, no! It was an accident. He can't see that? All right. We've got as much right in this world as he has. He doesn't own it. Zalmi. I spend to hell it. Evil Zalmi, la honey. Mr. Buchanan? Hello, Sergeant. You want a beer? Import business of yours hit a slump? Hmm. Everything's fine. You're a long way from your beat, aren't you, Sergeant? Aren't you? I'm having a drink in a quiet bar and minding my own business. Any law against it? I called your house last night. Your wife said you were in the Midwest. You think she lied to you? I think you lied to her. Sergeant, I'm a law-abiding citizen. You're an overworked, underpaid cop with a full quota of murders, knifings, robberies, and assaults to occupy your time. Now, why are you wasting it on me? We got a report from a patrolman on the beat about a man who was searching for someone with a scar on his neck in this part of town. Must be two other people. Fact is, I'm doing a little business research, finding out which products are popular and which others may be needed. I keep my eyes open, ask the odd question now and then. Is that okay, Sergeant? 
Mr. Buchanan, you probably earn more in a week than I do in a month. By a financial criterion, that makes you smarter than me. That may be why you don't trust me. Try taking something on faith. You get the right answer to that question you're asking. You can trust me with it. Otherwise, we both lose. Would you like to come inside, please? just talk to you. A detective? Why was he interested in you? Why are you? I believe in the law. I obey it. I live and work in this neighborhood. I own this bar, an employment agency, some real estate. I want to continue to live and work here, in peace. If you're in trouble, you may cause more, for yourself, for others. Most importantly, for me. One night a couple of weeks ago, I got slugged by a man on the street. There's a souvenir. He stole my watch. I want it back. It was an expensive watch. Let's say it has sentimental value. Sentiment is a luxury. Can you afford it? I own a 15-room house in South Pasadena. I also have a summer place in Malibu, 24-foot sloop and two automobiles. I want my watch back. Will you help me find it? If it's in pawn, it'll not be reported to the police. That presents difficulties. Not insurmountable, I'm sure. I'll try to find your watch. But nothing else. You understand? Nothing else. You hocked it for 10 days. It's past that now. Hey, wait a minute. I have to wait till I got paid. I sold it this afternoon. this time. Put it away. The incident is over. I know what you want. The name of the man upon the watch, which means trouble. There's no such thing as complete satisfaction. Now, you have a measure of it. Go home to your place in South Pasadena or Malibu. 
to your wife, your big cars. I bet you know everybody in this neighborhood, don't you? Si, senor. Maybe you can help me. I'm looking for a guy, a friend of mine, Spanish speaking. He's got a scar right here. No, senor. You don't know him? No luck, huh? I have a piece of paper here that has your man's name and address on it. But there's just one hitch. I don't like to cross up my boss, but I'll do it if the pay's good. A hundred bucks good enough? Make it two and you've got a deal. And fast. <laughs> What do you want? I'm looking for a friend of mine, Carlos Porte. I knew he lived in this block, but I wasn't sure just it's which... Second floor. First door left of the stairs. You know if he's home now? No, I haven't seen him around for a couple of days. You know where he went? I don't know, mister, and I don't care. I gotta clean up after these people. Ain't nothing says I gotta care about them. Why don't you ask his wife or kid? They might know. He's got a family? I said he's got his wife and a daughter. Don't that spell family pretty clear? I know. I'm a friend of your father's. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm looking for your father. I owe him some money. I owe him some money. On the watch, I saw a gun, a 38 revolver. You had it on that shelf on, under the banjo. You still got it? It's a very handsome gun. Never mind the sales talk. Just two things. Does it work? And how much does it cost? Huh. It works, and it cost $40. 
Okay. I need bullets. I don't sell ammunition. You say one thing. Money says another. That's all I got. Ten dollars worth. realize it was an accident, that I'll do anything I can to make amends. After you called me, I began looking for Carlos Porte. I didn't find him. But I don't think it wants your apologies, your explanations, your amends. Then what? What does he want? I imagine it wanted his daughter to walk, as she could this morning. But he's got to realize that it was an accident. He must have told her I'm some kind of maniac or something. She had nothing to fear. I've got to make him realize that. He knows his daughter ran from you into the path of a truck. He knows her left ankle suffered a compound fracture, that her right knee was shattered. Okay. It happened. Now she needs help, money, care. You've got to get to Carlos. Make him realize I'm willing to help. Eager to. It's too late to expect him to appreciate that. It's too late to go to him. I didn't find him, but he's bought a gun. He's looking for you to kill you. You've got to go to the police. It's your only hope. No. It's too late for that, too. They can't do anything but arrest him after he's killed me. And as for the mugging, the watch, Show me the jury that would convict him with his crippled daughter on the stand pointing a finger at me. No. Even if they did convict him, he'd be out again in 30 days and after me. No, I can't go to the police. I've got to make him understand that it was an accident. If that's your decision, here's a piece of advice. You start running, now. Don't stop until you're so far, Carlos can never find you. North or south, climate doesn't matter, only distance. I can't run. This is where I live. My business is here. Sure, I've got a good income, but this is the only place I can make it. I haven't got enough money to hide out on the Riviera or on some South Sea Island for the next 15 or 20 years. Mr. Buchanan, I'll continue looking for Carlos to explain your position. But he does not want to be found. And I must tell you this. The account of your first meeting with him is in the newspapers. Carlos knows your address, knows where you live. <laughs> Ted. She'll be ready in a few minutes. I want you to go out to the place and pick up her and Tommy, take them to the airport. Their flight leaves at 3.30. They'll be staying with Have her mother. Have you lost your mind, Dave? They'll be staying with her mother until I send for them. Evacuees, is that it? 
Or can't you bear the look in her eyes? Is that why you're getting rid of her? I've explained to Kay as much as I could. Then try explaining it to me. When you called, I thought you were drunk, but you are sober. It was an accident, I told you. I didn't mean it. So now you're just sitting here with a gun in your hand, waiting. For what? That little defect? That little flaw in your character to destroy your whole world? Haven't you learned anything? For sure. Just that there are more dead ends in streets. But I've got to get to that man. Talk to him. Try to get through to him. But I can't go to him with my hands in the air. Not now. The time isn't right for common sense, is that it? I've got to deal from strength. I can't make him put his gun down unless I have the strength to make him put it down. And you won't go to the police? I can't. I told you why. I'm asking you one thing, Dave, as a friend. Forget this. Stop it. I can't stop it. I can only try to make him stop it. There's no other choice. As a friend, take my wife and child where they'll be safe. Will you do that? talk to you. You want to talk? And what is that in your hand? A gift of love. We've got to talk! Fine, amigo. But not here. The police will be here any minute.
I didn't mean to hurt your little girl. It was an accident. Can you forgive me? Can you forgive me? my friend. Thank you.